up all you beautiful people welcome back to the shed in this one we're doing some fabrication stuff and i'm pretty excited for this episode because if you can see here we're making sliders for the lux so i already started on this one i bent her up i've notched it this one's ready to be tack welded in place ignore the long bit but let's uh jump back to actually how to do it um I am by no means a fabricator at all. I'm just a monkey in my shed with a grinder and a welder, giving it a shot. Um, so yeah, otherwise stick around. You might learn a thing or two of what not to do because I definitely already have. Um, but yeah, enjoy guys. All right guys, so what I have here in front of me is some 40 NB pipe, which I got from my local steel supplier. And I have literally just bent up one of the sliders. So, um, yeah, this isn't going to be a real how-to, it's just more sort of what I'm doing. Um, I'm using a cheap hydraulic 12 ton bender I bought from tool shop. I'll grab it real quick. So I'm just using one of these. That's how I got those bends. Um, they're about 50 degrees-ish. Um, by no means they're accurate, but they're the same. So I've been using this sucker. Um, I'm not going to show you how to use this because, to be uh, honest, I don't actually know how to use it properly. Um, there are plenty of YouTube videos out there. Um, all I'm doing is uh, marking 10 mil increments and just going 5, 10 pumps on each and then just working my way around the curve um, to try not to keep the pipe too much. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, other than that, with the notching, um, again, there is heaps of videos on YouTube prior to me trying to make one. I ain't gonna bother because I don't really know what I'm doing either on how to notch pipe. Um, Alrighty, so I got the pipe in the pipe bender. Now, this is not how I'm gonna bend it. I'm actually gonna lie it over, um, but this is just me setting it up. So I'll give you a closer look. So you may or may not be able to see this Sharpie line here. So that line running the length of the pipe um, is my, I'm using that as a guide to try and keep everything straight. Now, um, on this pipe, it's got a seam on the inside, um, and I've got the seam down towards the dies, so I want to bend towards the seam. Um, and those marks, so those big marks are 20 mil apart, so on that one I went 10 pumps, then 5, then 10, then 5, 5, 5, 5, sort of thing, so I just did 8. Um, I found that I started off doing 20 apart, like 20 mil increments, and it was starting to, it puts like a, a fairly big um, sort of dent, no, a little dent, a little, just where the die presses uh, in the pipe. Um, so that's why I went to go on the five, uh, sorry, 10 mil increments and then doing five. Um, and that seemed to work really well after that. So um, yeah, and I also found that it also, you know, because it's pressing the pipe, it sort of squishes it wider a little bit, um, which isn't too bad because the dies hold it to the right size so other than that I'll do this one I'll try and replicate the one I got up there and fingers crossed they come out the same Just a little bit more. Alrighty, guys and girls, they're all welded up. Now, whenever I tacked all these together and stuff and bent the pipe and notch it all, I sort of mucked up my notching a little bit. So I ended up putting a lot of filler, like a lot of weld in to fill it in. And then I ground it back, put like a bit of a groove in there, and then I've just done a finish weld because I wanted to 
see the world. Didn't want to be sitting there grinding it. So just done all that. Give you guys a look. Uh, no welder by any means, but I mean I'm pretty chuffed for these. These come up pretty good. Um, and whatnot. So fairly happy with those. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put some little gas, uh, little angled pieces in. Um, sort of across here, put three of them in I think. Um, same angle as the bends. So I'm going to do a double notch and try and figure out how to do that and then get them sitting in there right. And then put a welder plate on the end of these. Um, I'm just going to use three mil plate so I'll clean that line around. Alright guys, I have been busy notching tubes for I don't know how long. Um, I finally tacked them in. So I decided to go for some angled little braces um, so they're matching the front. Um, these took me ages to do but these actually came out really good um, so I pretty much just made one and then I just adjusted it and cut it and just use a flat wheel to finish them all off so if you're curious what the gap in between here is pretty much a hundred mil like it's about 98 or 97 on each they're actually really close to being spot on like the exact same which I'm really chuffed about um, so it's about 100 mil in the middle so this is about 50 degrees um, these bends so these are about I think they were 210 um, 210 mil long and I just marked out um, four sides to it if that makes sense so I looked at it from the end so I looked at it from the end like that and drew um, a vertical line and a horizontal line and then scrub those lines all the way through and then from one side I've come down 60 mil and then from the corners I've drew this V and cut that out and then I just cleaned them all up with a flat wheel disc until they fit really good um, so I'm going to burn all those in now Guys, I am working on the brackets that are going to connect my sliders, sliders to the chassis. Now I've got some five mil plate. Um, I got and I've cut that to. I think it's 165 mil long by 100 mil wide. Um, that just actually happened to be the size of the plate because um, it was guillotined off. It was an offcut from the metal shop, and it was pretty much the right size. So I've kept that. Um, so I've been under the car and got some measurements. I'm going to use three brackets per slider. Uh, I don't have enough steel at the moment, so I'm just going to do two to get them on the car, and then I'll go grab some more. But here's what I've done so far. So I've welded up uh, four L's at the moment. Um, so my understanding is, is I've left a bit of a lip on this bottom plate so I can get a really big thick weld on there and make it nice and strong. Um, and then it'll end up being the same so the other post will come up and I'll have it you know this is 8 mil that little um, overhang so I'll have it probably an 8 mil there also so it'd be nice and strong weld them on both sides and I didn't hopefully not warp it too much out of square but I sort of weld a 50 mil chunk here weld a 50 mil on the back and sort of try to rotate the heat a little bit um, now yeah so I'll chuck these on the car now I'll scribe the top of the chassis with a sharpie and then I'll drill two holes and that way when it comes to my welding this side I can just put the drill bit straight through and drill through and it should work theoretically. So, so I finished making up the brackets so that's them there. I've got a 12 and a half mil hole on them and they're all sort of a little bit different. Um, both welded inside and out. So I've just put the cars in the shed. I just put the passenger side on. This one's a bit awkward because I've got my fuel tank right there. Um, so getting bolts up and into it, you might see I've only got one bolt in it for now. It might permanently stay with one bolt. 
um, but we'll see. And then the other one is over there. So I end up welding on that slider and the brackets. So this one is almost finished. Um, I did it off camera just because it was quite awkward. And I didn't know what I was doing, but now in this one I can sort of explain to you guys. I ended up notching a bit of pipe for this and then um, just tacking it all. I tried to weld as much as I could on the car. Um, it was very awkward to do so. So um, I ended up just putting some sort of slug tacks here and there, and that was sort of enough. And then I took it off and fully finished welding it all. Um, it actually came up really good. I'm quite chuffed. So I'll turn the car around now and I've just put on those two. So I'm going to do the driver's side and I'll show you guys how I um, set it up to weld. So this is how I got it set up. I've got two chassis stands either end. And I just got a box and a couple packers in the middle to get my angle. Um, I found it quite difficult to um, line everything up. I had a laser out and a little level and all sorts of junk. Um, but the way I ended up doing it is, so my, I sort of referenced a few points. So the furthest point I wanted was where this fender joins the sill down here, there's actually a line, there's actually a gap. So that's where the front of my slider starts, and then the back's whatever. And then in terms of um, getting this angle and getting my heights, I worked off the door. So a door is important because, you know, if you bend these, you're still going to be able to open the door. So I've got about 20 mil. So this is what I did on the other side. I, I used the door as my height. Um, and not only that, I sighted it off the bottom of the sill. So I've got a couple of packers on that last chassis stand to pack it up. So I just eyed it across like that and, you know, I'm, I'm very close to being right. Um, and the other thing too is to position it this way on the car. There's actually a body line underneath. Not the seam of the cab, there's actually a body line. So I had my eye directly under the slider and I sighted that. And that's how I got that pretty parallel to the cab. Um, I'm quite happy with how it is. It looks good. It looked the same as the other one. Sitting out sort of nice and far. I'm just gonna put the other one on and just double check everything in relation to the other one I've just done to make sure they're both the same. Um, and then I'll start notching up some tubes and start tacking some on. So I've been working away making these little tubes. So I've got the notch for the slider and then a plumb cut for the chassis mount. So I'm about to weld these in. Um, I've checked, checked, double checked, everything's looks good. Looks pretty much the same, as close as I can get it myself. So set up the welder and start tacking it in. Um, I have disconnected the battery and I've also disconnected my battery for my 12 volt because that's an expensive battery and I don't want to fry it. So everything's disconnected so I can't short anything out, which is great. Gussets in, I've mounted them on the car, they both look fantastic. I'm super happy with that. Um, now, on the car, I've been trying to decide what I want to do with that rear hoop, and I've decided I'm actually not going to do it. Um, I've had some 30mm tube or pipe or whatever you want to call it, and I bent up you know, this sort of shape, and I just, I just didn't like how I was going to attach it to the actual sliders. Um, and I plan on connecting the sl these sliders I've just made with the sliders on my tray and I figure that's probably good enough for covering that rear quarter. Um, so I've cut the ends off like flush like with the front and I've just made some little discs. So I've just made some little, little discs to put in there and weld in. And then after that I'm going to start priming and painting it and you guys will see it on the car. 
There you go, guys. That is going to wrap up this episode on making some rock sliders. Hope you guys really enjoyed this one. Um, let me know what you want to see next and yeah, how your builds are going. I'm loving the comments from you guys. Um, so yeah, keep it up. God bless and I'll see you in the next one.